And if I produce something of that quality, I'd be absolutely delighted. There's a crossing technique that stands above the rest. It's just dangerous. Brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. Into a really Defenders hate it. Time. It's a dangerous ball. The breaks in the back post. Goalies don't know if they're coming or going. From Pereira. Kepa, could it get there? And even your teammates are sometimes caught in the back foot, admiring your technical brilliance. Awkwardly, it just needed a touch. The technique I'm referring to is the whip cross. This flat, low-lying spinning ball is cooked up with enough power and accuracy that make it a nightmare to defend, oh, it's an old goal. but a dream to attack. Oh, what a ball that is. And today we're going to learn it with five simple steps that can be utilised from virtually any crossing position on the field. And if you're ready, let's get into the first of the five steps. First up is the glance and roll. Simple enough, this lift of the head either before you engage the ball or after gives you a snapshot in your mind as to the drop-off location of the whipped ball. Kevin De Bruyne. What you're looking for is a pocket of space somewhere between the defenders and the goalie. Some call it the corridor, corridor of uncertainty. The area is, is just dangerous. It's very difficult to defend. Target, who can he find? Oh, he's taking a deflection and got it. It's very difficult for a keeper. Yeah, it's horrible. It is honestly horrible. And it doesn't have to be super accurate. Just with enough pace and whip into an area of space can be a nightmare to deal with. I've just put a, put a lot of pace on it and put it into a good area and he's done the rest. It's Alisson! Oh, unbelievable! And why the roll? The reason for that roll forwards is to give you space to perform the technique. So if you could lay it in, my friend. But also, by moving it forward, it's giving you that built-in top spin so that you can create that more flat profile on the delivery of the cross. That was too much. It's not to say you can't achieve the same effect with a dead ball or a ball that's rolling towards you, but it is a lot more difficult and takes a little more technical know-how to pull it off. So with that added topspin of the ball roll, it gives the opposition less time to react to the flat path and effectively defend the situation. Charlison! Next up, the standing foot. Like we've mentioned in other techniques, the short pass or driven pass, typically you want to point this standing foot towards the target you're kicking towards. But because of the angle in which we're looking to whip the cross, that's just not going to be possible. Like it's going to be really awkward. So instead, you want to angle somewhat towards that direction. You may find it's like a 45 degree angle to the target. Where the really important step comes into play is the placement of the foot. Because we're traveling in the same direction as the ball, you want to place it slightly ahead of the ball so that when your kicking leg comes through, the ball is caught up and the standing leg is now in line with the back of the ball as we make contact. And make sure it's as close to the ball as you can comfortably get, typically no more than a foot width away. However, this is just a guide and not a hard rule. Just make sure you're not reaching because that's when the technique runs the risk of going a bit wayward. Damn it. All right, next up, moving from the standing foot to the rest of the leg. And this is probably the most important aspect to the technique and what a lot of beginners have a tough time with. Perfect. Go, Alex. Go. Because nice. nailing this allows all of the following steps to happen. Remember how I said about the angle of the foot? Well, because you're not able to open that up fully, it means that your hips are going to feel more tied up than otherwise. So you need to compensate for that. And this comes in the way of bending the standing leg, but not just bending it, actually loading up all of the energy into that leg, allowing your hips the space to move back and away from the ball so that you have room to straighten the kicking leg as it comes through. And that's step four. It's this step that all of this has been building up to, to connect with the ball and generate power, whip, and that flat profile that your strikers can attack. It's all dependent on the straight leg on contact. Yes, using the hard part of your foot and connecting with the correct part of the ball is important, but if you haven't allowed the space for your kicking leg to straighten at the correct time, it means you're gonna contact the ball with a bent leg, losing power, accuracy, making it super inconsistent. You rotate through the ball and somewhat irrelevant what part of the foot or ball you're connecting with okay lastly the exit or the follow through if you will so because you're transferring the energy from the standing leg through that kicking leg that energy needs to go somewhere what i tend to do is come over with a nice arc to the kicking foot to get it down to the ground as soon as possible that is crucial with developing the power but also maintaining balance as you come through if you allow that leg to just sort of go where it wants, you're gonna either spin around and just lose balance, basically. So you wanna bring that kicking leg down as quickly as you can 
And I find that I tend to drag that left foot out to disperse the energy. But you may find that you are more of a hopper onto that kicking leg. And I'd encourage you to practice this and just focus on repetition and sort of figure out how it feels and test yourself. Test how close you can get the standing leg to the ball. How much energy can you put into that standing leg to give your hips the space? And finally, can you kick and hop onto the standing leg without stumbling? All are good to try out, but start slow and practice a bunch. Excellent. But you don't want to forget the arms. And this video right here will break down Beckham's technique and how he used that windmill effect of his arm to generate more curve, more power from a dead ball situation. So go check that out and I'll see you there.